So, I have some questions for you. What brings you joy? What are three things that you know well enough that you could teach somebody? What are some things you want to learn? Story about a hard time you went through and how you came through it. And who's going to go with you on who is going with you on your journey of life other than God? These are the kinds of questions the asset based community development team with the church at Crossroads is going around our neighborhood and asking and striking up conversations with people who are out in their yard, people who are taking a walk, people who are playing basketball, and Raymond Davis and Steve Elmer are part of that team along with some of our lay leaders at the church at Crossroads. And what happens in a place like uh, where we do ministry um, you may be aware the Church at Crossroads is, lives inside Crossroads of Michigan, which is a social service agency on West Grand Boulevard in Detroit, just down from the Motown Museum. And we are two separate organizations. Crossroads is a social service agency, but the Church at Crossroads gets to live there in their chapel and use their spaces and be in their neighborhood and call the community together. And when you um, go there, and many of you have, and help provide free children's summer lunch and activities, you can see there's a big difference between where we stand today and um, where I will go right after this service back down there. And um, where 400 people are receiving uh, Sunday meals, houses are not in great shape, and there's a lot of economic de um, devastation, poverty, and the effects of the scourge of racism are very apparent as well. And there's a lot um, of healing that is called for, of course, but here's the thing. When I felt called to start the church at Crossroads, it wasn't because I thought I could go and make everything right or make everything beautiful or, or fix things. What called me was the faith of the people in that neighborhood. When 2008, I wasn't even an ordained person by any means, and I walked into Crossroads to just be with people when they were coming for a birth certificate or coming for a bag of food, and I saw the chapel that was in there, and I was, I yearned to pray with the people beforehand, and I just got a little, got some permissions and started doing that, and it was like all this faith just walked in the doors and I was blown away. I was blown away at what was way beneath the surface that I would have never known driving through our neighborhood and many, many other gifts. And the call was shortly after I heard, why is there not an Episcopal congregation here? Being a church nerd that I am. <laughs> And so it wasn't until eight years later when I got my MDiv and was getting ordained and all that that the bishop allowed me to really try this thing. And here we are eight plus years later, um, worship Holy Eucharist every, um, every Sunday, which again I said I'll be doing shortly. And we have children's ministries, again, that so many of you have been part of. And... Tonight we're on Zoom at 4.30 with our church school. We'll be in person in a couple weeks. And just growing um, where God is calling us. But the big thing, and this is most, almost ridiculous because we're already outside the church walls in a way because we're not even in a, a, a church building. Um, we're in a chapel at Crossroads where we, we are so graciously allowed to be. But we're still inside a little bit. We want to get outside our walls. And what a difference it's making. We're just starting this. We're just learning. What does it mean to really go outside 
can see people for who God created them to be. And the questions that I brought up to you are the kinds of questions that help sort of loosen the soil and the dialogue to find out what people's stories are, what God is doing in their lives, how God is touching all of us together. You may have heard of the Reverend Dr. Samuel Wells. He's a priest that is um, in St. Martin's, an English Church of England priest, at St. Martin's in the field in Trafalgar Square in London, where there is a lot of um, diversity uh, need that shows up there. He's uh, been in a lot of urban parishes, and he's done a lot of reading and reflecting on what it is to do ministry with um, persons who are have uh, suffered a lot of uh, oppression, economic uh, degradation, and what he says is this: poverty is a mask we put on people to hide their true wealth. Poverty is a mask we put on people to hide their true wealth. And I'm going to say this. You can put whatever word you want first. Poverty, color of a person's skin, economic class, where you live, what your nation is, what your ethnic background could be a label we put on people to hide their true wealth. And when we think about the paper, we read it day after day, and especially this week in the tragedy, of warring nations, of fighting, because we want more power than the other. When are we going to see each other as just children of God to love? This goes deeper, I think, than the church at Crossroads and what we're doing in our neighborhood. It's really about every single one of us and the mission we're called to as children of God and certainly as the church. We heard today about Jesus' admonition to, if something is, you know, if something is causing you to stumble, cut it out. Your arm, your foot, your eye. Oh my goodness, does he really mean this? No, he does not really mean for you to go cut off your hand or your foot. <laughs> he means for you to turn to God, to put away those things that are troubling you, to depend solely on God. And then to be the salt of the earth. To help preserve that which God laid down for our world from the very beginning. The creation from love. The creation out of nothing. Every single one of us, every creature, we are made in God's image of love as seen through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we can turn to God for that direction for that guidance. A few stories that have come from doing this work and that I pray will increase as the stories come out more and more. Um, some of the people I've met, I can tell you about um, Deanna, and she is um, a woman with three kids that lives just down from Crossroads, comes to church, comes to our church school, and she shared with me about a time that she heard the jail door slam and sat on the steel bench alone, except for God, and how it really took her to the bottom of her soul. Doing much better now, working, her children. And what I learned was her real love is interior design. And I learned from a woman named Linda that she, who comes to the, the free summer lunch with her two grandchildren every day, really loves to crochet and would like to start a crochet ministry with the Church of Crossroads. And I'm hoping we can launch that. And then there's Mike, who likes to come and sing when we have worship, and he has a beautiful voice. And then there's Jeff, and this is a guy who just snuck into our chapel, and as soon as service started, he left. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> of course, that's fine, but I would love to talk with him. And 
then I got the chance, and we stood outside Crossroads while lunch was going on one day, and I just said, hey, weren't you in there? And he goes, yeah. And I said, well, why did you leave if you don't mind my asking? He goes, well, you all started singing. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, I was worshiping. And he said, yeah, but I want to learn scripture. I want to teach scripture. When I was in prison, he was a gang member. When he was in prison, he started reading the Bible. And I said, oh, you know, and so we talked a little bit about that. And last week, I noticed him peeking into the service about three times, but he wouldn't come in. So I do believe God is working in, in his life deeply. And I just pray to stay connected and keep the dialogue and the doors open and, and see where his story goes and where, our, where does our story go as well. This is an exciting time to be a Christian. It's an exciting time to be a person of God. Each of us have a commission. Each of us have a commission to, when we leave this place and while we're here to, maybe ask some of those questions that somebody you'd like to know and meet. Somebody who might just be yearning to be seen in a way that they're not usually seen. In a way that brings forth both the yeast of God's love and heightens the ability for us to preserve it together, to share it. There's much we have to do. And I'm so grateful to journey with all of you and to be together um, as partners, as ministers in relationship together. I'd like to conclude with this prayer. God, please help us to each look for your grace and mercy in our neighbor. to help the invisible become visible in your name. And Lord, let us not forget ourselves, the mercy we need at this very moment, and the mercy our world needs. We pray this in Jesus' name. <clears throat>